Praise the Lord. Thank y'all again for coming out from Mega Grace Center today. Coming on out and being willing to praise the Lord with us. Amen. Amen. Bless those on YouTube and Facebook also. Thank you for listening in. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to begin our next lesson here on knowing God. We're going to pick it up. Amen. In the book of John this morning. John 14. John chapter 14 this morning. We're going to read verse 21. You will stand with me a moment. I'll read it and then you can follow behind me. John chapter 14, verse 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Ready? Read. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank you this morning for revelation, for knowledge and understanding, Lord. You know what we need. Amen. Holy Spirit, pour it out. Amen. Bless us with those things from heaven that will edify us and comfort us, correct and reprove us this day. In Jesus' name. Jesus, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we've been talking about knowing God. Amen. And Jesus here begin to show us how, amen, to provoke the manifestation of the Lord. Yes. What we must do in order to get him to show up uh -huh. in our lives, amen. to make himself known, clearly known mm -hmm. unto us. This word manifest is a type of making oneself clear, mm -hmm. clearly known. Yes. And this is what God wanted to do. But it's many times throughout the Bible we'll find that God has something for us to do to provoke him, to do a thing. You say, draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. So in order for us to get God to draw nigh to us, we got to begin to draw nigh. It's a simple promise. You do this, and I'll do this for you, because you're acting on your faith. You're not just believing, but you're acting as though you believe. And the Bible says, faith without works. It's dead. It's not faith at all. Even as the body is dead without the spirit, so is faith the dead without works. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Jesus is telling us here, let's look at this again. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, remembers them, obey them. He it is that loveth me. One of the things we, we talked about a while back, you know, is loving God. And yeah. there's different ways that we can demonstrate our love toward God. Amen. And he tells us here Amen. that we have his word and we keep his word. Mm -hmm. We meditate in that thing to do it and begin yeah. to walk this word out. Mm -hmm. We are demonstrating that we love God. He it is that loveth me. Yeah. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him or I will show up in his life and make it apparent to him that I am with him. And this is what God wants for us and this is what we want. We want to wake up in the morning and know we've been visited by angels. Amen. Thank you. We want to feel his presence right. while we're praying. We want to touch on the head. <laughs> Want to feel the sprinkle of the of the anointing coming down as we're talking to God. That's right. And He does it as we demonstrate our love toward Him. Amen. It's become a regular thing to us. If we yeah. put forth that effort, if we would do some things. We look at this word and say, okay, God said, okay, if I go into my secret place in the closet and begin to talk to Him, He said, He's going to exalt me publicly. He's going to make some things happen in my life. Amen. So let me find a secret place in my house yes. where I can talk to God on a regular basis. Uh -huh. And I'm provoking God yes. to do something. Amen. This is what he wants us to do, just Amen. a simple act 
of obedience. Our prayer is very important. Yes. Our obedience is very important. Yes. And this one right here, looking at verse 22, Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. And this is very, very powerful for us to, to look at. It's okay. Now I see how to get God in my business on a regular basis. Amen. Yeah. I'm on... I'm on Get his word in me. I'm going to keep his word. Amen. I'm going to meditate on that thing. I'm going to remember it. And when the enemy comes, I'm going to speak it against the enemy. Yes. When he try to speak into my mind mm -hmm. to get me to say or do some exactly. wicked yes. thing, Amen. I'm going to speak that word which I have kept and remember. Amen. And that's going to cause the enemy to flee. Yes. Because I have another promise that says, mm -hmm. resist the devil and he will flee from you. And when he speak to your mind and you speak back to him the word of God, casting down imagination, never happening. When you speak the word of God to him, he has one choice, and that is to flee. According to the word of God. If it's in the book, it's yours. If it's in the Bible, I mean, this is God's word, and he has to obey it. Uh -huh. So all we got to do is do it. Once we do it, obey it, we're in business. We can deal with the enemy. Yes. And we practice this and practice this. Mm -hmm. And we get to a place where we understand mm -hmm. that we have power and authority over the enemy. Amen. Mm -hmm. And nothing shall be impossible for us. We believe this word. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. We talked about loving Jesus a while back there, ways that we could love him. And this was one of the big ones here. Amen. Spending time with him. We understand that he is the word. We saw in John chapter 1, a very familiar scripture in the beginning was the word. And the word with God and the word was God. The word was God. So we understand that the word is God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I mean, God, amen, Jesus being God in the flesh. Amen. 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 I mean, when, that, when that word wrapped around the flesh, he became God on earth. Yes. It's important that we know that. Because those kind of truths help us to navigate around all the deception, many deceptive things that's coming forth today. Oh, yeah. Again, like there being different roads going to the same place. Mm -hmm. okay. We understand that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father but by me. These scriptures we have to embrace and plant them in our hearts and remember them. And God will cause us to triumph and triumph and triumph. Amen. This is what he does for us. Yes. Amen. Because he's good. He wants us to be successful. Yes. Amen. Amen. We just got to, amen, work this thing out. Yes. That's right. Thank God for it. Thank you, he is good. Yes, he is. yes, Lord. Thank you. Let's take a look here at Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55. Book of Isaiah. Chapter 55. We'll pick it up verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but waters the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, 
and it shall prosper in the thing or to us sin. This is a big one. The word of God. He said it. We can take it to the bank here, brother. We can rest assured that he's going to accomplish that thing which he said he's going to accomplish. Yes. Well, we, we saw that there's things that we have to do, though, in, in some cases, yes. amen, to provoke God, okay. amen, to move on his word. Mm -hmm. Praying is one of them. It's a big one. Obeying his word is very big. To look at what God said mm -hmm. and to be about doing what he said do. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we find that God is, is going to do what he said he will do. It remind me of the song this morning. Mm -hmm. That God will do what he said mm -hmm. he will do. He's a good God. Yes, amen. And he loves us so much. But he requires things of us. Yeah. He requires us to be steadfast yeah. and unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And this takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes diligence. It takes the three C's. Being committed to God. Being consistent. In his word, consistent in prayer. He made consistent in worship. Consistent in the house of the Lord. And it take continuation. Continue. Jesus told his disciples, let's turn to John, amen, chapter 8. We'll go down and look at this one. We talked about how to become a disciple. And, uh, we pick it up in verse 30. And we see this in, in, in this area here. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is what we desire. We don't want to just be those that believe. We want to be those that continue all the way through and become a disciplined one. One that will continue to pick up the word, continue to pray. One that will continue to worship the Lord in the midst of all things, in the midst of tragedy, amen, in the midst of conflict, in the midst of the trials and tribulations. And as we continue, we find that every time something arises, that God will always see us through. He will always make a way. And we find it when we're going through trials and tribulations and pick up the word, that's when God speaks aloud. That's when it becomes clear. When we're hurting. When we're sad, sorrowful, stressing. We stop a minute. It's okay. I'm going to just read, look at the word right now. I'm going to go meditate on the only word right now. And you turn and you open it up and you find that he got that word that you need for that moment mm -hmm. in your life. And I found this to be true on several occasions. The book of Hebrew, chapter 12, I would go there and read that on my job in uh, Rock Island, Arsenal. I would read that continuously. And God began to help me understand that no matter what you're going through, He's able to work something out in there. Mm -hmm. It's for our good. Mm -hmm. And we sing the song, it's for our good. And we find that all things work together for our good. Because we know that we love God. Yes. And we are called according to his purpose. And so he's going to find a way in the midst of our trials and our tribulations. While we're getting to know him, he's going to find a way for it to be for our good. Because wisdom comes in some of the strangest times, in some of the strangest ways. And we're getting spanked. <laughs> we're getting tried. That's when wisdom tends to set in. We look back and say, man, if I had done it this way, it may have came out better. But I reacted this way instead. I got in the flesh instead. And then the time come again for, the similar, for a similar situation. And then we wait on God and make the right decision. We hold our peace. As the Bible says, you should hold your peace. I will fight your battles. And you should hold your peace. Amen. I love it that God says, 
amen, to take it easy, to not react quickly. But watch him, wait on him in every situation. He said, overcome evil with good, and I will avenge you. But this is something that we got to hold near and dear. Because yeah. evil, will, evil will always come our way. Always. Yeah. And it has a reason. It's a purpose for it. Yeah. This evil is nothing but a tool. Everything God takes everything and uses it, he uses it right. for our benefit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't see it. We were missed of it though. Yeah. But at the end of it, yeah. mm -hmm. we have the ability to bear the peaceful fruits of righteousness. As God has said. I want to take a moment here and look at Hebrew chapter 12 this morning. It's a big part of knowing God. We can trust Him. Hebrew chapter 12. We can learn what's happening in the midst of our trials, that God is up to something, and He's trying to get us to trust Him, He's trying to get us to obey Him. He's trying to get us to watch him handle our business. And we're trying to handle ourselves. And we learn, okay, I'm just going to step back and pray. God said he's going to handle it for me. We learn to quit trying to handle it. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look here at Hebrew chapter 12. Because dealing with trials and tribulations is one of the ways that we get to know God. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's the heavenly father. And father spanked the children. When they disobedient. When Uncle Sam don't want that to happen. He want that to, for the stop of that. He want the children to rise up and do what they want to do. Oh, right. When they're five years old, they want them to decide whether they want to be a boy or a girl. Oh, That's the people of God. We can't have that. Nope. We got to train them up in the way they should go. Right. It's interesting how things are changing in the school system. Oh, yeah. How we see this, this spirit of baffle man. Uh -huh. Part woman, part man, yes. part goat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we see this. Yeah. If you ever seen a picture of that spirit? Yeah. It's the one that's over the Masonic Order uh -huh. and other demonic groups out there. Yeah. You find that this is what the devil wants in this season of humanity yeah. to confuse people, mm -hmm. the gender, oh, yeah. male and female. And we find that more and more are being deceived in this matter, this gender yeah. thing going here. Mm -hmm. And we have to be in prayer yeah. Yeah. and be watchful yeah. and educate when we get an opportunity. Yes. Because most of them just don't understand what the word says concerning these things. Yeah. Let me get back to Hebrew chapter 12 here. Mm -hmm. I picked up verse 1. Well, for sin, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin, and the sin, which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And the sin. There's always the sin that try to linger around as we move closer and closer uh, and develop a stronger relationship with God. God wants us to go higher and higher in him. He wants us to have an ever-increasing faith That's right. so that we can lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily, so easily beset us, that thing that linger, want to linger around. But when the Bible says meditate the word day and night, the promises come. He calls us to be unmovable. Jesus he said to the two, he said, send no more. And then he told one, send no more unless what? Something worse come upon you. So we see that sin come with consequences. It comes with a spanking. So Satan is going to go out of his way to try to keep the sin around. And God is able to come in even in our dreams and identify the sin. To let us know, hey, I see what's going on. I want you to see that I see, so you can work a little harder toward getting rid of it. Yeah, 
Amen. And God is able to deliver on time from everything that hinders. That's right. Thank you, Lord. But there's always the sin. Yes. But the power of God is there. He want to teach our hands to war and teach us to begin to chop away at this thing. Praise God. Let me let me get through this. I'm about to jump. I'm about to jump over already to Luke chapter eight. <laughs> Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. So we can get to a place where we just feel like we bombarded with trials and tribulations. We come to a place where we just want to give up for a minute. But see, God is always working something. He's always fixing something. All too often we don't realize it. But God is trying to get us to see something. And he's yelling, hey, over here. Uh -huh. And we're busy with something. Amen. And it's something that we're busy with is causing us to not be able to quickly get through what God is trying to bring us through. Uh -huh. It's distraction. It's hindrance. They try to linger around. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. At least you be wearied and faint in your mind. This is real. This is the way it works. Ever been there? Oh, yeah. Why are they always criticizing me? Why are they always harassing me? Why I got to be the one? What I do to these folks? You just walked around with the grace of God on you, and the enemy wants to take it off, want to take your faith. See, Paul put it like this when he was getting ready to go to glory. And he realized that, okay, I done went through our minister to kings. He said, I fought a good fight. And he said, I finished my course, my course, my course. And to close it off, he said, I kept the faith. This is what we have to remember. To hold on to our faith. We talked about the football player running down to the goal line with that football in his hand, flying. Mm -hmm. All he was looking at was that goal line. I got to get there to get this touchdown. Mm -hmm. But the 50 yard line, the enemy just snatched the ball from him. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize it. He kept going. He thought he still had his faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he thought he still had that football, his faith. Mm -hmm. So he just kept flying toward the goal line. Mm -hmm. And then he got there and celebrated. Mm -hmm. And then he realized something. Whoops. I'm missing the football. My faith was gone. Getting busy with distractions can cause that to happen. The enemy comes in, and we think we got faith because we're doing the thing we always did. we routine stuff. We want to keep acting on our faith and make sure we're doing what God said here. So when we finish our course, we know that we've kept the faith because we've been obedient. We've been steadfast. Been, amen, unmovable. Because that's what God wants for us. Mm -hmm. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against what? Sin. Striving against what? Sin. sin. This is what we have to do. We got to strive against sin. We got to fight against the enemy. Paul said, I fought a good fight. And that's what he was talking about. He strove against the enemy, against sin, and he was successful. He said, I finished my course, and I kept the faith. When we strive against sin, we find ourselves successful. All we got to do is keep fighting the good fight. And Jesus made it very clear for us how to do that. We'll look at that. But in Hebrews chapter 12, the writer is trying to get us to understand that we have the ability to get to places that we don't we, we don't even think of right away. And there's a need to be spanked. And let's look at this. 
And ye have forgotten the exhortation that speaketh, verse 5, unto you as unto children. My, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou rebuke of him. Mm -hmm. We just look at it, oh, I'm just going through trials and tribulations right now. People just picking on me. My job, my, my, my boss don't want to promote me. Mm -hmm. I mean, why these guys get the promotion and I can't get it? Yeah. I'm angry, you know, I just want to do something into, into some spiteful here. Yes. And then we begin to learn. And God began to show us. Yes. Trust in him. Mm -hmm. Your day is going to come. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he does what? Chastises. He chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Mm -hmm. Every son. There's no exceptions. Mm -hmm. What are we saying here? Everyone that come to God is yeah. going to get spanked. Mm -hmm. We looked up those words and we find there's a punishment. And we know what it's for. What do kids get punished for? Disobedience. Disobedience. Stubbornness. Stubbornness. Mm -hmm. I said go here, but you went there. You thought, you thought I didn't know it, but I put that that track in your in your little bag there. <laughs> yeah, I saw you. I saw you turn right, but you should have turned left. You thought you were smarter than me, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got him. We got him calling today. Uh, yeah. God gave us some yeah. devices to to keep our kids straight these days. Mm -hmm. They be looking. You're like, what? What are you talking about? Exactly. Well, let me show you right here. See that? You went that way, and yeah, God is able, Amen, to get us on track. Because He always see what direction we go. That's right. And sometimes we forget that God is watching. Oh, yeah. And then when we get started getting spanked when the trials and tribulations come, That's right. we think a minute. Mm -hmm. I see I'm getting spanked here for what I did. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. We need to consider that more often because mm -hmm. there is consequences. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Decisions. Consequences. consequences. Mm -hmm. Come with the territory and it's for our good. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this. If you endure chastening, God dealing with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? The intent is for us to mature in the midst of it. We can't mature without the trial and tribulations. It won't happen. We think we, we're acing every test. Mm -hmm. Just to find out that we didn't, we made a seal on that one. We almost flunked one or two of them. <laughs> then we did flunk a couple of them. Until we test it, we don't know for sure. Mm -hmm, yeah. We've got to be tested. Yeah. Well, thank God for the test. Thank you. But if ye be without chastisement, mm -hmm. well, of all are partakers, then you're bastards and not sons. Mm -hmm. We have to go through the trials and tribulations. Right. Keep trusting God. Mm -hmm. He's up to something. Yeah. He's trying to get us to mature and come to a place where as we can trust him for sure with all our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we stop leaning to our own understanding. That's right. We stop finding the word, with, okay, what God said about this? Mm -hmm. Let me look it up. Because yeah. now we got a friend. Mm -hmm. His name is Google. Mm -hmm. We can just type it right in. He said, yep, there you go, right there. Go to James chapter 3, verse 5. Yeah. You'll be in business. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Verse 11. Verse 10. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of what? His holiness. His holiness. Holiness we need. Holiness we live for. This is what God wants for us. He wants us to talk about holiness, and he wants us to talk about that which is profane and help the people understand the difference because throughout the nation that's beginning to fade away we just want to talk about the things that make people happy today we got mega churches that just want to talk about things that make people happy yeah. amen the idea is to help us understand what's right and what's wrong that's right. what's righteous and what's wickedness that's right. we can't let wickedness just continue mm -hmm. we got to 
see what's happening there and deal with it properly. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be what? Verse 11. Joyous. But grievous. Mm -hmm. It don't feel good. You're not going to be rejoicing in the midst of our trials and tribulations. I've heard some people say that. James said, Canada with joy. But the writer of the book of Hebrews says, when you're getting spanked, you might go ahead and cry a minute. Because the pain is kind of getting to you. You might frown up a little bit and say, ouch. Uh-huh. But we can count it all joy just the same because we understand something. We can count it all joy. Because we know God is trying to get us to a place where we can be steadfast and unmovable. But it takes a minute. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields us the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Which means everybody, every single time, it's not going to be exercised thereby. We, the idea is to bear the peaceful fruits of righteousness get to a place where we can bear fruit. Amen. And to continue to grow and develop and to become who God wants us to become. This is what he wants for us. Wherefore, well, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. You ever been going through a trial and tribulations and you got to a place where you're saying, woe with me? And you're just moping around all over the place and sadness and sorrow and depression just begin to weigh you down and you looking like, oh man, I ain't gonna make it. I mean, he's saying right here, well, wherefore, well, lift up the hands which hang down. Quit moping. Yeah. Straighten them arms up. That's Don't be right. saying woe with me. Right. And the feeble knees. Knees and got weak. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm finna lose everything. Uh -huh. It just ain't working out for me. Lord, help, help me out here. Amen. And make straight paths for your feet. Least that which is lame be turned out of the way. Mm -hmm. But let it rather be healed. Amen. Let it rather be healed. God is up to something. Yes. Yes. He's trying to get us to be stronger. And wiser, mm -hmm. steadfast, yes. unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He wants us to exercise the three C's on a regular basis. He wants us to be committed to Him. He wants us to be consistent. Consistent. That's a tough one. Being consistent. Okay, you pray twice Monday, okay, you pray, pray twice Tuesday too. Yeah. And Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday. Twice on Saturday, mm -hmm. and then hit it again twice on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Double times on Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But we want to be consistent with God. Because yes, right. He's looking for us. Oh, yes. Yes. yes, amen. You got a you got a secret place in the house where you pray on a regular basis? When you don't show up in that secret place, God is still looking for you. Especially if you got a set time. Amen. At 9 o'clock every night before I go to sleep, I'm going to be right over here on the middle side of the bed or wherever. God is looking for us right there. He's waiting for us, John. He wants us to be right there. If you have a set time, God does that. Even though we can pray anytime. We can seek his face anytime. But God wants us to be consistent. That's right. He wants us to continue in him. Wherefore, verse 12 again, wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Amen. He's able. He, is able. he will do it. He'll make a way for us. We just got to keep going. No matter what's happening. Let's turn to Luke chapter 12, uh, 8. Luke chapter 8. make that Luke chapter 4. And here's Jesus in the wilderness. And he's showing us how to overcome the enemy. Giving us a good illustration here. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, verse 1, mm -hmm. returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness by the spirit it's important we see that because in the midst of our trials and tribulations also 
all too often we don't realize that God has put us in that position because he wants to teach us something. Amen. He wants to bless us. Mm -hmm. He don't want to harm us. He wants us to prosper and be in health. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were in it, he afterward, afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, Notice when he got hungry, the devil started to speak. Because when you're hungry, you can't get your food on time, you tend to get agitated. The enemy be waiting for an opportune time. You ain't cooking my food yet? Oh man, I've been working hard all day. Want a piece of the day, honey. <laughs> and in those days, he didn't eat nothing. And when they were ended, he up with hunger. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And the crisis, one of the main crises that we have today is identity. Mm -hmm. You're not really a, a girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you're not really a boy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you really called to be a Christian? I should be over here with Buddha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She should be a Muslim. Know any Muslims? They tend to hang around a lot of families. Maybe you ought to join the Masons, or be in this fraternity, or sorority, and things of this nature. It's important that we understand, amen, that the enemy will come in and try to get us to become something that we should not be. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's important to be close to God, very close to him, so he's able to show us, hey, this is where I want you to be right here. I want you to be faithful to me so I can reveal to you who you are, what I've called you to be, so you can begin to start doing Amen. What I've actually called you to do. Amen. Amen. We want to know who we are in God. Yes. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Mm -hmm. Prove to me who you are, the devil is saying. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, right. but by every word of God. Every word of God. This is what we need to live by. Our spirit got to be alive. We got to be strong. We got to keep our spirit strong. And we do this by meditating the word on a regular basis. We won't miss a meal feeding our body, though. Our body always nice and full. Right there, huh? Where that meal at, Mommy? I'm hungry this morning. But we need to also pray. Yes, right. We need to also meditate in the word so our spirit will be strengthened. Not by bread alone, but by every word of God. Amen. Looking to do what God said do. It's important we see that Jesus began to speak the word at the enemy as soon as he spoke. And he will speak to us on a regular basis. And we have to practice this. If we don't practice it, sometimes we might get stuck sitting there thinking. You know, saying that the birds, amen, going to come. Yeah. They're going to come and land on our head. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to let them stay up there and make a nest. Right. <laughs> Preach, yeah. We can just slap them right on up. Yeah. Sometimes we, we hear a thought, we yeah. get to thinking on something. Uh -huh. Past, present, and future. Yeah. And we just sit there yeah. and get to thinking. And the more we think about it, the madder we get. Yes. Yeah. So it's a simple solution. Quit thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that simple. Yeah, okay. Meditate on the word. Yeah. And that madness will go right away. Yeah. Amen. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shoot him, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. 
and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And many are being tricked yes. oh, yeah. to worship the devil. Yeah. We look at those in Hollywood mm -hmm. and different places, those that are yeah. millionaires. Mm -hmm. They got this prestigious group they got to be a part of, they want them to be a part of, mm -hmm. and then they have a rite of passage. Yes. They got to worship the devil. Mm -hmm. They got to do something wicked to that, to be a part of this group. Mm -hmm. And it's becoming very commonplace as far as the knowing about it. You look at YouTube, you'll find, do a little research, do a little Googling, you'll find that these elite groups mm -hmm. uh, recruiting these millionaires. Oh, yeah. But in order to be a part of this group, mm -hmm. you have to do some wicked acts. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with homosexuality. Mm -hmm. We listened to this one gentleman, mm -hmm. and he was talking about, uh, they was trying to get him to join the elite, mm -hmm. elites and uh, they had this building that you would go from room to room, and yeah. each room was like a stage. Yeah. And you would do certain things. Mm -hmm. It was building up to something, though. And at the very end, it was a very, very evil, abominable act oh, yeah. they had to carry out. Yeah. I think he stopped at room six, is that right? Uh, yeah, seven was the one you didn't want to get to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But those guys, they did. They wanted to complete the whole thing, so they can now be a part of this elite group and receive all these prestige and all these benefits and all these things. Yeah. So important to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We know about the rapper and all these guys that got caught up with him and this and that. Yeah. That stuff wasn't far from them. Yeah. The stuff that they was engaging in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Wickedness, abominations. Yes. Verse seven, if thou therefore would worship me, all shall be thine. And that's what the devil wants. Mm -hmm. He's deceiving many yeah. into worshiping him mm -hmm. and promising all kinds of stuff. We know that witchcraft is all over the place today. Oh, yeah. It comes in different names mm -hmm. and it's very subtle. Oh, yeah. So we have to come against, as a Christian people, come against the spirit of divination, yeah. the spirit of witchcraft, mm -hmm. come against the sorcerer, the wizard, the warlock, yeah, right. the witch. Mm -hmm. we have to begin to warfare against these things in the name of Jesus. We have to break curses, That's right. and spells, mm -hmm. enchantments, incantations, and these things. Yes. We got to cast them down Amen. in the name of Jesus. Because they are there, especially this month. We're moving toward Halloween, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about Halloween, yes. but it's a wicked holiday. Mm -hmm. As a Christian people, we should never participate in it. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Time permit, I will go over some of those notes that I have on Halloween. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to hit those more and more as we move closer to the Amen. end of the world. Amen. It's important we're aware of these things. Amen. Verse 9, verse 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now I want you to take note here how the devil switched up his tactics. First, he would just shoot stuff out there. And Jesus will come back, it is written. Yes. So the devil want to come back, mm -hmm. shoot his stuff out there, and then at the same time, say it is written. Uh -huh. He's going to throw the scripture out there. Mm -hmm. And he does that. Yeah. And I've noticed that many, many churches, mm -hmm. many, many religions mm -hmm. have the scripture. Some have just the Old Testament. Some have the Old and the New. But they throw stuff out there like Satan did here. Yeah. And deceive many. Verse 12, And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he did what? Departed from him. 
for a season. For a season. It's important coming back. that we see that. Yeah. For a season. For a season. Coming back. Because he's coming back. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He'll just come and hit you and leave. And that's it. He's going to come back. And he's, yeah. he's been given a right to do that. Mm -hmm. But the enemy is subject, amen, to the Lord, to the Word. That's right. He can't do no more than he's allowed to do. Mm -hmm. And we get a chance to go back over the book of Job again, the first couple of chapters. Mm -hmm. And we see there in the book of Job that, mm -hmm. amen, Satan was given leeway to do certain things. But he was always told, you can't touch his life. That's right. So he was limited. Mm -hmm. Thank you. See? Keep praying. Keep speaking the word. I shall live and not die. Yes, but declare the works of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So this is a great example for us here in Luke chapter 4. Yes. Uh, yeah, we need to get to practicing. Mm -hmm. When those thoughts come, we speak. We know the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, mm -hmm. amen, 4 and 4, we casting down imaginations and every half thing that is all itself against the knowledge of God. We need to cast these things down. Now, verse 10 and so also. Somewhere in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Casting these things down. Uh -huh. Amen. We gotta practice that. Because yeah. mm -hmm. the enemy will always mm -hmm. speak to our minds. Yeah. He will always use someone yeah. to try to yank our chain. That's so right. I use that. Yes. That example. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn, amen, over time to bear the peaceful fruits of righteousness mm -hmm. in the midst yeah. of our trials. And in the midst of our tribulations. Because God wants the best for us. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes, yes. Take a minute here and hit Halloween uh, just briefly. In 2021 and 2022, $10 billion was spent on Halloween. $10 billion. $12 billion was spent in 2023. Increased a couple billion. 3.3 billion was spent on candy alone. Mm -hmm. 4.6 billion on costumes. Seven out of ten consumers participated in Halloween. Seven out of ten. That's a lot of people. In church and out. As many churches have these Halloween things going on. We are not to participate in it at all. We are not. There's better ways, amen, to get candy to our children. And we just got to tell them why. And explain to them. This is what's going on. It's known as the devil's holiday. According to the National Retail Federation, Halloween spending in 2024 is expected to reach 11.6 billion. The end of the month. That's how much it's going to be spent. Estimated. A portion that is going to the great Halloween activities for children and adults of all ages. Mm -hmm. We find that Halloween is a pagan holiday. Mm -hmm. yes. Pagan holiday. Mm -hmm. Satanists thanks Christians mm -hmm. for celebrating Satan once a year on Halloween. Mm -hmm. The Satanists, the Luciferians, devil worshippers. I said, thank you, Christians. We appreciate you going out there yeah. and celebrating the devil. Because many Christians don't realize what's going on. Yeah. And in doing these things, we allow Satan a foothold. Yes. Uh -huh. They can wreak havoc in the houses. Mm -hmm. Divination spirits are released. Yes. Witches, sorcerers, wizards, warlocks, Satanists uh -huh. recognize it as the devil's holiday. Mm -hmm. So they increase their, rit their rituals, mm -hmm. the things they do. They drink more blood, they cast more chicken feet, and all these things they do, they increase it. October 31st is one of those days of the year where these guys really get into it. And so it December the 22nd. And there's a laundry list of dates. I don't have them all, but we'll get them and we'll throw them out there uh, between now and Halloween. Try to be educated as much as we can on these things mm -hmm. so we can know that we should not be doing this. God don't want us participating in an evil event. Yes. The Bible tells us to abstain from all forms of evil. That's right. If it have any form of evil, any shape, mm -hmm. form, yes. 
reflection, anything of evil, we are not to touch it. That's right. In keeping with holiness, mm -hmm. we got to say no. Yes. We can't involve ourselves or participate in any way. It opens doors to demons. Yes. It gives Satan permission to enter into our lives. That's right. And the psychics we know about, mm -hmm. these guys do their thing, they increase their they pocketbooks around this time frame. Right? Yeah. All the way. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the information they're getting is from Satan. That's right. That's right. And anytime yeah. someone go to a psychic mm -hmm. and receive the information they get, they curse themselves. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's true. Because you're getting information from Satan yeah. and you embrace it. Yes. And many people not, don't even know this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope. They just want to hear the future. Mm -hmm. Get their uh, tarot card read and all this kind of stuff. The more we know, yes. the safer we can be. That's right. Yeah. The more we spend time with God, the more He revealed to us. Oh, yeah. He calls us to stumble up on stuff oh, yeah. that we're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. He'll find a way. We've been riding on the street mm -hmm. and find a billboard. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture on there. Yeah. It's exactly what we need for that day. That's right. Amen. Stuff we've been wondering about. Yeah. God has a way of keeping us informed. Oh, yeah. He does. Yeah. But what better way than the church? Amen. 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 What the church is for. The more we see God, the more He reveals. He's a loving God. He wants to be successful in all in all areas of our life. Let's stand as we close. Father, we thank you today for your loving kindness, for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for helping us, God, to know the things that we need to know. And thank you for giving us the strength to be able, Lord, to be obedient. Help us, God, to walk in a way that's pleasing to you, to know your good, acceptable, and perfect will, and to walk in it carefully, O oh God. Help us to fight the good fight of faith skillfully, to finish our course, and to keep the faith all the days of our lives. Thank you, Father. Have your way now. And as we go, let the angels go before us to make our way safe, make our day peaceful. Let a rejoicing spirit be upon us. Thank you for protection, O God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.